If you call and win, you're in good shape. Yep. Now, now I'm starting not to like this talk. I don't know if I can, though. Come on, press can figure it out. I'm going to fold. That's a good fold. There you yeah. go. I remember to set up eyes. Really? This is Kreskin. I don't have to tell you that, or that this is the amazing Kreskin. I'm, I'm excited about this new series because I'm going to share with you what's on my mind and at times reveal things about my experiences or outlook on what's going on in the world that uh, may surprise you. At this time of the year, and someone sent a recent, I guess it was last year's World Poker Tour, excerpt from it because it's a it's a contest in which card experts around around the world uh, vie to be in a final playing of it usually it's in las vegas where they win a considerable amount of money and every year now i don't know for how many years my name comes up sooner or later by either the people covering it the newsman or one of the people playing it and what have you and they just played a version of it from the last poker tour we may not have it this year because of what's been happening in the world and uh, my heart goes out to those people suffering and we'll rise above it though, sooner or later as far as the, the rest of us are concerned. But that's not the point. I uh, want to mention this World Poker Tour because I have to share a memory, he's no longer with us, about a remarkable man. His name is John Romero. And he was known as an outstanding expert in the gambling industry. He knew me before I knew him. And I got to share with you why, unbeknownst to me, in the earlier days when I was would be performing in Las Vegas, I could gamble. I could go to casino tables and what have you. They limited the amount of money I played at. True in Atlantic City, not anymore, of course. I can't gamble almost anywhere. I did not know he was standing behind me. And as he explained and talks about in the book and what have you, day after day, session after session, he watched me play. He gave me a priceless, he, uh, priceless quote. He didn't give it to me. It ended up that he made it public. But I don't mean this egotistically. I just get a kick out of it. He said that Kreska's the most dangerous person he's ever seen with the deck of cards. He says the casinos would rather deal to Willie Sutton. It's interesting to be compared with an outstanding criminal <laughs> of the worst reputation, but I find it refreshing how he did that. He was talking about my uh, skill with cards and particularly with blackjack. Well, I can't play poker anywhere, but let's go back to blackjack. Some years ago, and this really sealed my, my future in playing the game, I was in Aruba wonderful place, performing at a casino for a number of weeks. In closing night, I said to my road manager, I know we have to leave at 3.30 uh, in the morning, uh, you know what, I'm, I closed, I think I closed my show at 10.30 or 11 or so, I'm going to play some blackjack. He looked at me and said, what are you talking about? You can't play blackjack, you're going to get in trouble. I said, no, 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 most of the people here, the people working here don't know me, uh, the people who see me are from England, United States, uh, Canada, so I think I can get away with a little bit of playing. And he said, all right. I sat down at a table, not in the casino I was performing, and we went nearby to another casino. I put down $37 and played blackjack. There were a number of other people. Every uh, half hour or so, my road manager would come in from the dance floor where he was meeting gals and dancing. And by the second occasion, he came in and said, what? I said, keep your mouth shut. Don't make a scene. I'm not usually stern in that way usually, but you'll understand why momentarily. At the end of an hour and a half, he came in and he said, oh my God. I said, please, please. And you go on the internet because he's quoted as discussing this night that he'll never forget. Finally, he came and I said, you know, we've got to leave in a half an hour or so. We've got to go back to the hotel, which is not far from here. 
change our clothes because we're leaving at 3.30 to go to a couple of flights to get back to the States. And uh, we just, I decided to cash it in. Now, they were all chips, not cash. And I have to tell you, it's the fault when you're winning constantly. You sometimes forget yourself. And we're carrying them and dropping chips on the floor. Neither of us is getting upset because we got to leave and get back to the hotel in time. Put the chips on the counter where they cash it in and pay me. Except as I'm leaving, I said, what am I going to do with the Reuben currency? I, I'll, I, I'll never be able to use this. So we go in the lobby and I said, there were a lot of people there, I said, any of you here speak English? And a lot of them raised their hands. I said, you know, if some of you work here, is there a place you can take me? I'd like to convert this into U.S. currency and I'll give you a very good tip. Two gentlemen volunteered, one said, I'll drive you over and they took me there. And we got there and I converted the money and went back to the hotel. Now was a scene that would take place in a movie because I called the man who booked me at the hotel. He was from Florida, he was in another room, but he's worked, he was there all year because they're booking talent from the United States. And he said, what are you calling me at this early hour? I said, I'm leaving in an hour, half an hour. He said, I know that. I said, you must come here. After he said a few words, he says, all right, he came, Knock on the door. There he was in the bathroom. We opened the door. He came in and said, what the hell did you do? I'll never forget this phrase. He said, what in God's name did you do? He was looking at the bed. I said, well, I want to say goodbye. Thank you for booking me, but can you help me fold the $100 bills? I don't want to put them in a check in piece of luggage. If security opens it, when we get to the States, they'll wonder what's going on. Let's just put it in my pocket. It looked like I gained 40 pounds. Because while I sat down, as my road manager recounts in the discussion of this, I sat down with $37. When I left the table, I had won $22,400. You can't play cards anywhere anymore for money. But I want to, this is a brand new deck of cards, because wherever I perform, whether it's a gigantic theater, a stadium, private affair, uh, corporate affair, I have a request of a couple, two or three deck, brand new decks of cards on the table. At one point, I had a few thousand decks of cards in my possession. I've given most of them away. This is a brand new deck, by the way, beautiful deck of cards. And you know what I'm going to do, folks? I'm going to show you something that has nothing to do with thought reading. Because a number of people in the business, Mike Douglas had a rule, because I did more television shows on his series than any other guest he ever had. And the rule was when I came on, I would have a deck of cards there, they'd have a deck for me, I would do something and then go into my thought reading after that. So this is a brand new deck of cards. I'm going to take the aces, uh, the four aces, out of the deck if I can. Oh, I've got the ace of diamonds here. Let me get these out of here. All right, the ace of clubs. All right, the four aces, uh, and we have the heart right here. Let me, if I, and I don't, I, I, the rest of the deck, it's, it's uh, brand new, so it's in, in sequence and all that jazz. But the important thing is, are these four aces? Because this has nothing to do with my ability as a thought reader. This has to do with something which, as John Romero said, he said, no one would ever hand you a deck of, cards, even in a poker game. I'm going to put those cards on the uh, top of the deck, the four aces as you see them, and all I'm going to do is cut the cards like this. Now, it's clear the ace, well, they're, they're somewhere in the middle of the deck. The aces are no longer on, on top, and they're no longer, well, there's one ace there, and that's, that's, uh, that's careless of me, I have to say this. I thought in cutting these, that was very poorly done on my part. Look, look, isn't that interesting? But even the cutting, the four aces are still near the top of the deck, one card above it. Now, that may have been a phony cut because I did it just to prove what I was doing. But let me now show you not on the bottom, and uh, there's no aces on the top because clearly I, I, I put them in the, in the middle of the deck.
Now, here's what I'm going to do. The aces right now are the 23rd, 24th, 25, and 26th card down from the top. I'm going to shuffle these cards, and I'm going to do it in just an innocent way because the standard shuffle, except as you know, when you play cards, when you played uh, gin rummy or whatever it was, there's always a change in the cards, and uh, I want to make sure, you're not going to believe this, but one of the aces, isn't this interesting? Was in the bottom, I'll place it here, in the middle of the deck. Did I do that accidentally? We've got the card here, got a card here, and the important thing to realize is that, you know, look at cards, are the, the, those are hearts. But I'm going to cut the cards, and you saw me put them in the deck as one pile together. Let me show you what just happened. Every card is going to be dealt from the top. And I sat with some of the top gamblers and said, my God, you stacked it by shuffling it in less than 60 seconds. I said, yeah, like 49 seconds. One, what's that card? Two, three, not very important cards, very small ones. My hand. One, two, three, my hand. Ace of clubs. One, my hand. And I had put those in the deck all together, and look at how they found their way. So when the cards were dealt, the fourth hand got the four aces. Oh, by the way, you know, a five-card poker, each hand has five cards. What would be the strongest card in value next to the aces? Well, the next card in value are the kings. That's right. So by the way, if we meet you who are watching me at this moment and are interested in the game of cards, we better make it hearts or goldfish a game in which there's no money involved. See you next time.